Now let's do an example where we have a function that we want to minimize and we're going to subject it to two constraints. So we're going to consider the problem, minimize this nice quadratic form. We'll say x, y, and z is equal to the vector x, y, z multiplied by the matrix 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1. And of course the vector x, y, z. And we're going to subject this to the constraint h1 of x, y, z is equal to x minus y is equal to 1 and h2 of x, y, z equals y is equal to 1 as well. So this is, this is pretty simple. We could solve this in its own right, but we want to see exactly what's going to happen with the uh, Lagrangian now that we have two constraints. So the first step is we verify the non-degenerate constraint qualification. So we check the NDCQ, right? So here we'll have that DH is equal to, of course, DH1 DX, DH1 DY, DH1 DZ. This is just our Jacobian. DH2 DX, DH2 DY dh2 dz and we'll we'll easily see that that's 1 negative 1 0 0 1 0 which has that the rank is equal to 2 clearly it's already in row echelon form so the rank is equal to 2 uh, which is also equal to the number of rows so NDCQ, right, NDCQ uh, is satisfied. For, for every single possible point, right? Normally this would be a function of X, Y, and Z, and we need to make sure that it works for every single point on the constraint set. Um, but since, since it had this form, it was really easy. So now the second step is form the Lagrangian. Well, we've got L of X, Y, Z. And we're going to have two constraints, or two Lagrange multipliers, mu1, mu2. So it's a function of X, Y, Z, mu1, mu2 is equal to when we multiply everything out, it'll be x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 2xy minus 2yz minus mu1 times x minus y minus 1 minus mu2 times y minus 1. That's our full Lagrangian. And now we figure out what the critical points have to satisfy. So the critical points, so the second step, or the third step rather, so the third step is find the critical points of the Lagrangian. So we compute, we have to have that 0 is equal to dl dx, and we see that that's going to be 2x minus 2y minus mu1. 0 is going to be equal to dl dy is equal to minus 2x plus 2y minus 2z plus mu1 minus mu2. 0 is equal to partial of Lagrangian with respect to z is equal to, so this is, 
we're just taking all the derivatives and setting them equal to zero. The normal standard thing to do. 2y plus 2z. Zero is equal to dl d mu one is equal to negative x plus y plus one. And our last equation will be zero is equal to d l d mu two is equal to minus y plus one. And this, these all give us the following augmented matrix, right? So this is just a system of linear equations, so we'll solve it using our augmented matrix and Gaussian elimination. It'll be 2, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 2, 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1, or sorry, 0 now negative 2, 2, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to do some swapping. The first thing I'm going to swap, and I'm going to do two swaps at the same time. So I'm going to put this guy up here and this guy down there. And I'm also going to put this guy, uh, the last row and the second row. Uh, and so I'm just going to go through this. You know how to do this, but it's good to, to see it all again, and you should work along with me. So we'll have negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Oh, and I forgot the augmented part, so I'll write the augmented part uh, here. Uh, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 0, 0. And now that I've done, I, I didn't mess with the third at all, so it's 0, negative 2, 2, 0, 0. Down here I'm going to have now um, 2, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0. And I'll have negative 2, 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1. And the, the augmented form should be, well, I have a negative 1 here, a negative 1 here, and 0, 0 worlds. So we're in good shape. So the first thing is we clear out here, but let's let's multiply by a, uh, a negative sign. So uh, just get rid of all these negatives, change, change all the signs of these guys to make things maybe a little bit nicer. So we're going to subtract 2 of row 1, and we're going to add 2 of row 1 here. And what do we get? Now we've got 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0. Nothing changed here. Same thing here. Um, now this will be 0. This entry will be 0. Um, and when we subtract 2 of negative 1, we'll get a 0 in this position as well. 0. This will still be negative 1, 0. So we've got 1, negative 1, 0. And we change this augmented part, so we subtract 2, so this will be minus 2. Um, and then we're going to have, over here, we added 2 of that row, so this will be killed as well. We end up with negative 2, 1, negative 1. Uh, and we added 2, so there will be a 2 here. So that's all well and good. Uh, let's go ahead and now multiply this through by a negative, and this guy through by a negative. So I, I'm just doing that for convenience sake. And now, now I've got a pivot already there, and so I'm going to add 2 of row 2 here. Everything else is already cleared out. What do I get? 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 2 in this position, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1. In the augmented part, I've got 1, 1. Uh, what changed here is I added 2 to this, so I got 2 here. Uh, I didn't change any other, so I still have 2 and 2 there. Uh, so now let's add one copy of row 3 to this guy to clear that guy out since we already have a pivot and we're doing a uh, Gaussian elimination so 
So we'll get a zero here, um, a one here, a negative one here. One, one, here we'll have two. We're going to have, since nothing changed here, that's still a two. And we added row three to this guy, so this will now be a four. And now we subtract off minus row four to clear that out. And therefore we have the system one, negative one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 two, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 negative one, 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 two, two, two. And therefore we're done. Uh, and we can immediately read off what is, what, what is the critical point, right? So we're going to have that, well, x, y, z, mu1, mu2 is going to be equal to 2, 1, 1, 2, negative 2. And this is really, this part right here is really what we're interested in. And that's going to be our critical point, and that's the, potentially where the, the optimization point is, right? Um, but the last step is we would like to verify that that is in fact the optimal point on this constraint set. So the fourth step is verify uh, minimality. And, uh, and how do we do that? Well, uh, we notice that the Hessian, so d squared f, of this guy is 2, negative, negative 2, 0, negative 2, 2, negative 2, 0, negative 2, 2. Uh, subject to uh, these constraints where I've got Essentially, I've got x minus y is equal to 0, and y is equal to 0. So I essentially have a situation where I can construct a bordered matrix and ask, on this set, do I have a m minimum? And I can set this up and go through that bordered matrix and see that, in fact, on this set, my function is going to be convex. And once I see that it's convex, then I know that I do have, in fact, that 2, 1, 1 is the global minimum.